Hey, this is Matt Duncan. I'm with Lakewood Traffic. We're going to talk about crosswalks today, the do's and don'ts and how to use them and different scenarios of when we put them in and when we don't. All right, we're going to talk about two types of crosswalks, controlled crosswalks and uncontrolled crosswalks. Uh, this is an example of a controlled crosswalk because we have pedestrian indications and traffic lights at the intersection. The main thing to remember at any type of crosswalk is crosswalks are not used to stop cars. Crosswalks are used to channelize pedestrians to safe crossing locations. At this intersection, you can see that we channelize the pedestrians to cross in front of vehicles while they're safely stopped. On a side street, if there's only one car present, when the light turns green, it could hold a minimum of about four or six seconds. And if there's no other cars present, the light will turn from green to yellow to red. What the pedestrian button does is if you hit the button, it holds the traffic light green long enough for you to get from one side of the curb to the next. So it's very important that you always hit the pedestrian button because that's the only way that you'll have enough time to safely cross the street from one curb to the next. Some people think that pressing these buttons repeatedly speeds up the green, which doesn't work. It's no different than if you were to press an elevator button repeatedly in a building. A control crosswalk has a yellow indication on the traffic light, and that's really important because it allows a driver time to perceive and react to the fact that they need to come to a stop. That's why it's really important that you allow the driver time enough to stop before you leave the curb. And not only is that common sense, it's also the state law. You can't just suddenly leave the road in front of a vehicle. Another really important thing to think about, when you're on the curb, as soon as you get a walk indication, always look left and right as if it were not a traffic light. There's a problem with distracted driving on the part of drivers and pedestrians. For example, at this traffic light, the yellow indication is on for about five seconds. If there's a driver approaching the intersection and they are texting, there's a really good chance that they may miss that the traffic lights turned yellow to red. So when your walk indication comes on, always look for drivers that may be running the red light before you enter the roadway. Another thing you can notice is that we don't have a crosswalk on the west side of the intersection because we have a heavy left turn movement that turns across the crosswalk. So when we're designing crosswalks, we take into account certain things like conflicting traffic, um, where a pedestrian will be most visible, um, and then other factors like um, curb ramps. So if you're a pedestrian with a disability, we're guiding you to a location where there's pedestrian ramps in the street. This is an example of an uncontrolled crosswalk. It's uncontrolled because there's no traffic light present. So at this intersection, the duty to safely and wisely enter the road is solely the responsibility of the pedestrian. We get a lot of folks that call and they think that a crosswalk will stop a car, and that is absolutely not true. It's also a really dangerous assumption. Before you enter the roadway, you must look left and right and make sure that it's safe to enter the road. It's called the duty to yield. It's the duty to yield relies or falls on the pedestrian in this case. So once you've legally entered the crosswalk and you're within the crosswalk, then an approaching driver has the duty to yield to you. Okay, we're over by Lakewood High School, Garrison and 8th Avenue. We have a different type of crosswalk at this intersection. So this is a crosswalk where when you press the button, it activates warning lights. So again, this is still an example of a crosswalk that is not controlled by a traffic light. So when you press that button, you still cannot suddenly step into traffic. And the reason is because there's not a yellow indication that gives the driver enough time to slow down and stop. So the warning lights alert a driver that the pedestrian may be completing their crossing as they're approaching the intersection and warns the driver to stop so they can finish their crossing. Now we're standing at just an everyday, typical local neighborhood intersection. We get requests for putting crosswalks in at places like this. And putting a crosswalk in in this scenario could actually be dangerous. For one, as you can see, there's plenty of gaps to safely cross the street. So we don't need any extra devices for a person to be able to get from one side of the street to the other. The other thing is, again, sometimes when we put crosswalks in, people are misinformed and they assume that it means that they then have the right to just suddenly step off the curb. But one of the things that makes crosswalks safe is that they are unique. If we put a crosswalk at every single intersection, it would no longer be unique. Hopefully that explains some of your crosswalk questions and different types of crosswalks we have in the city. If you have any additional questions, go to lakewood.org and search transportation.